On December 7, 2022, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, abruptly scrapped its three-year zero-COVID policy. At the beginning of December, the virus quickly spread to northern China, then to Shanghai and southern China. Caught off guard, the business community in China was completely unprepared. Widespread testing, mass quarantines, and urban lockdowns all ended abruptly. What follows is a shortage of workers due to illnesses. As Chinese manufacturers see a decline in demand, international corporations are accelerating the move of their supply chains, particularly in the technology and automotive sectors. The Beijing government reported on December 31st that manufacturing and service sector activity in December fell to the lowest level since February 2020. According to a media group in China, the Caixin Purchasing Managers Index, which measures a composite indicator of China's manufacturing activity, showed a reading of 49 in December 2022, the lowest level since last September and down from 49.4 in November 2022. This is the fifth consecutive month of decline in the index. An index below 50 indicates contraction, while one above 50 indicates expansion. This suggests that China's problems will undoubtedly ripple throughout the supply chain and affect the global economy. Let's look at the technology supply chain first. An Apple supply manager told Nikkei Asia, China's supply chain is still struggling to cope with the recent sudden change in government policy, which has led to labor shortages due to a sharp rise in COVID cases. He said since the late quarter in December 2022, Apple had alerted us to lower orders for almost all product lines, partly because demand was not as strong. According to an investigation of the supply chain of several parts suppliers by the newspaper Nikkei, Apple has notified them of a reduction in the number of parts produced for AirPods, Apple Watch, and MacBook in the first quarter of 2023. An executive at an electronics component maker that supplies Samsung, Apple, and several Chinese smartphone makers told Nikkei News, the new wave of COVID is spreading so fast that most companies are finding it pointless to segregate their employees. It's very confusing. A manager at a printed circuit board supplier serving Apple and Intel in Jiangsu province said, More than half of our team tested positive and of course we faced production disruptions. But it so happens that demand is very low, so we had our employees on leave. For now, the communist authorities are asking symptomatic personnel, including medical staff, to stay on the job and are also allowing factories to encourage workers to return to work as soon as possible. According to our findings, the outbreak in China isn't anything like what the Chinese government has told the public. The outbreak tsunami isn't like a cold, as Chinese officials claim, where people develop resistance to the virus and recover in the short term. In reality, as time passes, more people have discovered that the scariest thing about the outbreak isn't getting positive for the first time, but getting it again. After becoming positive for the second time, the body's immune system will have dropped to a very low level and the infection may become life-threatening. We are still watching to see if there will be multiple infections. In late December, the Financial Times reported, citing anonymous sources, that Apple expected to start producing MacBooks in Vietnam as early as May 2023, and that Apple had been trying to establish production sites for all of its major product lines outside of China. The MacBook was the last product Apple would move because of its relatively complex supply chain. A person with direct knowledge of the matter said after the MacBook production is moved, all of Apple's flagship products will essentially have a production location outside of China. iPhone production in India, and MacBooks in Vietnam, Apple Watch, and iPad. Taiwan-based Foxconn is the only company globally that has consistently ranked in the top 10 of Business Week's Technology 100 for the past five years. Foxconn has as many as 36 subsidiaries in China. Foxconn Zhengzhou employed as many as 300,000 workers at one time and made about 85% of the Apple Pro phones. In November 2022, Foxconn's Zhengzhou plant was disrupted by chaos as a result of the extreme outbreak control measures, leading many workers either to be quarantined or flee the plant. Naturally, production was disrupted to the extent of more than 30% of production was affected that month. The incident marked a manufacturing disruption caused by the CCP's reaction policies to the outbreak. Soon after, two Indian government officials with knowledge of the incident said that Foxconn planned to increase the number of employees at its Indian iPhone plant by 53,000 over two years, raising the plant's workforce to 70,000. In fact, as early as 2020, Foxconn had planned to move some of its Mac computer and iPad production lines from China to Vietnam at Apple's request. For China, losing these businesses is symbolic of its weakened status as the world's factory on a broader scale, but it's more than that. 
according to an article published by the Chinese media NetEase on December 3, 2022. Since the birth of the iPhone, Apple had given orders to Foxconn and other factories in mainland China for OEM work, thus giving rise to a well-established Chinese supply chain. Apple also invested a lot of resources and efforts to improve the technology and quality level of the Chinese supply chain. In order to make the supply chain meet its technical requirements, Apple took the initiative to acquire important equipment for the Chinese suppliers which was not available to Chinese companies even if they had the money. It thus enabled the rapid rise of the Chinese supply chain. The article also cited the example of Nanchang Ofilm Technology Co. Limited, a Chinese company sanctioned by the U.S. government on July 20, 2020, when it was added to the list of entities. The loss of Apple's orders has led to rapid losses for the company. In addition, Chinese company BOE began supplying OLED panels to Apple in 2021 and made as much profit that year as it did in the previous 10 years. The article commented that the Chinese media often spoke of Apple's exploitation of the supply chain. Still, if one compares Apple's suppliers with those of Chinese cell phones, one would see that no matter how much Apple exploits its supply chain, it's still more generous than Chinese companies. While Apple and Foxconn continue to reduce the Chinese proportion of their supply chain, they are trying their best to help improve the industrial chain in Vietnam and India. Indeed, Apple announced on September 26, 2022 that it had started producing the iPhone 14 series in India. The news is considered by the Indian media as a victory for made in India. India's newspaper Business Standard said that India would develop a stronger ecosystem in related manufacturing in the coming years and would become the next China. A report by J.P. Morgan dated September 21, 2022 said that Apple would shift 5% of global iPhone 14 production to India by the end of 2022. By 2025, 25% of iPhones may be produced in India. Vietnam is also seen as one of the countries most likely to replace China as the factory of the world. With the launch of India and Vietnam's own cell phone brands, the good old days of Chinese cell phones may be over. As Apple supply chain moves to other countries, additional related supply chains may move out of China based on the clustering effect of the industry. This will have an unpredictable and far-reaching impact on the Chinese economy. Since the US-China trade war, top electronics manufacturers from Apple, HP, and Dell to Google and Meta have all made at least some plans to move production and sourcing out of China. For example, the production of most U.S. data center servers made for Google, Meta, Amazon, and Microsoft has moved to Taiwan, Mexico, or Thailand. An executive at Inventec, a major supplier to HP and Dell, told newspaper Nikkei, In general, China's advantage in low-cost manufacturing is waning, and many U.S. customers now want to choose some production location outside of China. This has been an accelerating trend for almost all global brands and is unlikely to change in the future. Over the past few decades, China hasn't been innovative in technology, relying largely on imitation of foreign technology and even on foreign investment. If Western technology firms are trying to decouple from China and are transferring technology chains on a massive scale, the Red Nation is destined to lose the battle. Its planned dream of becoming a manufacturing powerhouse will end up in vain. The auto supply chain we will discuss next is facing a similar challenge. The auto industry is very important to the economy. It is a technology and capital-intensive integrated industry with a large industrial chain. A car comprises more than 30,000 parts including steel, plastics, petrochemicals, and electronics. The production of automobiles also drives the development of neighboring industries, hence known as the locomotive industry. The epidemic has disrupted manufacturing and supply chains around the world for the past three years, forcing automakers to cut production drastically. This has created a shortage of new cars, trucks, and SUVs and the uncertainty created by the CCP's unstable or extreme policies could force plants to close on short notice. Moreover, political decoupling would be even greater if Beijing's relations with the U.S. and its allies were to break down, potentially threatening trade. The Financial Times reported on December 27 that a report published in December by Sheffield Hallam University said that a quarter of the parts and components exported from mainland China currently go to the United States. While most international auto groups are unlikely to abandon the Chinese market entirely, the flow of parts from China to the rest of the world will, over time, decline. The goal of those global manufacturers is to manufacture parts and vehicles in China exclusively for the markets in which they sell their cars, that is, to form a closed supply chain. Global auto manufacturing groups have quietly begun to reduce their reliance on Chinese parts manufacturing 
And this is a concerted move by major automakers. Several people familiar with the matter reported that Ford and General Motors have been actively moving parts for the U.S. plants outside of China for more than a year. Most parts used in North America are already sourced locally. Ford executive Ted Canis said bluntly, there is a large-scale rethinking of logistics operations across the industry. The supply chain is going to be the focus of this decade. The CEO of multinational automaker Stellantis said if 85% of the total cost of a car is parts, if you don't do something about that 85%, you won't have any impact. And this requires us to use low-cost countries. Adding that China is not the only or even the best country, there are many options in India, Mexico, and parts of North Africa and Asia. Tesla, currently the largest electric car company in the U.S., has shown no inclination to shift its supply chain production lines out of China gradually, but it's hard to say what the future holds. The company suspended car production at its Shanghai plant on December 24, 2022, after being hit by an outbreak in China, starting an eight-day shutdown earlier than originally planned. According to Reuters, Tesla will also suspend production in China during the new year, which is not the norm. In August 2022, Joe Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act, a new bill that mainly concerns a number of new energy subsidy programs. The bill requires that highly subsidized electric vehicles be made in North America and that the materials and key minerals in electric vehicle batteries be sourced from the U.S. or from countries with which the U.S. has a free trade agreement, FTA, and that most of the batteries be manufactured and assembled in North America. After 2023, electric vehicles with batteries from other countries will not receive subsidies. This move is also considered to exclude China and reorganize the global supply chain with the United States as the center. Relevant data shows that at present, about 90% of the main raw materials for power batteries, such as lithium and cobalt, are processed in China. Therefore, some analysts believe that this is another containment of the CCP by the U.S. after the Chips and Science Act 2022 on high-tech as well as industries with future development potential. At present, China occupies the leading global position in the field of lithium battery manufacturing. At least in the short term, the U.S. cannot get rid of its dependence on China for the production of electric vehicles. However, now that the United States has joined the race in this field, it is very interesting to see how the situation will unfold in the future. European automakers who are more dependent on China than the U.S. include German automakers Mercedes, BMW, and especially Volkswagen. Their supply chains are more at risk. In a report in the Financial Times, Narayan from RBC said that the Germans are so closely tied to China, not only in sourcing, but also in terms of customers. This is actually the biggest risk that investors are concerned about right now. But the Europeans are also taking action. The head of the Mercedes-Benz supply chain said at the Financial Times Global Board Summit last December that any changes in the company's part sourcing were not motivated by political concerns. Obviously, we look at nearby procurement sources, which could also be from European suppliers, U.S. suppliers, or Mexican suppliers. Japanese automakers are less dependent on China than their European or U.S. counterparts. They are also starting to reduce their reliance on the Chinese supply chain. Mazda said on August 12, 2022, that it shifted some production of parts made in China to its home market in Japan after the Communist Party imposed a COVID-19 lockdown on Shanghai. It requested more than 200 suppliers that used Chinese-made parts to stockpile inventory in case of future disruptions. A Mazda executive told the press that in the long run, the goals Mazda seeks when contracting with suppliers for new model designs would include increasing domestic inventory in Japan and diversifying production outside of China. Since the new coronavirus pandemic in 2020, more than 2,000 Japanese companies have withdrawn from China. According to Nikkei News, on October 18, 2022, Honda of Japan embarked on a major supply chain restructuring plan. It explored the possibility of manufacturing passenger vehicles and motorcycles with minimal Chinese-made components in the summer of 2022. Honda's share of global vehicle sales in China is more than 30%. Currently, Honda is working on estimating the cost of sourcing from other regions, such as Southeast Asia, and said Honda is not advocating de-Chinaization right now but rather addressing the risks in China and developing an emergency preparedness plan under normal circumstances. For example, in the event of an emergency in the Taiwan Strait, management will have to consider whether to continue to do business in China. Many industries previously dominated by China will also be diverted to other regions, bringing a different look to the future. For automakers, Thailand has been a center of production for auto parts, vehicles, and electronics in addition to the countries mentioned earlier. This has also brought new opportunities for Taiwan. 
According to the Ministry of Economic Affairs of Taiwan, Taiwan's exports of automotive parts and components grew significantly to 46.3% in the first half of 2022. This has driven the growth of Taiwan's exports and demonstrated the competitiveness of Taiwan's industry. In the midst of these crises, the CCP media has been quite optimistic. Why? They claim that with the good policies of the party, everything will be fine. On Christmas 2022, China's CGTN broadcasted a commentary claiming no negative narratives by the West can shape how the Chinese economy will grow. As I said, China held its annual work conference where it discussed the policies necessary to implement the current five-year plan goals. The highlights of the report were about how to stabilize economic and social growth. On the positive side, the report was clear about encouraging private enterprises, micro, small, and medium-sized business entities, real estate, consumption, needed tech development, efficient production, digital economy, and a stable renminbi. On the negative side, there was a desire to discourage speculative bets that don't create jobs or economic impact and rein in local government debt. The tools proposed using targeted expansionist fiscal monetary programs and policies, uh, or in other words, supporting the economy where they think it's needed. The Chinese economists see the future. An opportunity to implement the conference report and get China back on track with its dual circulation strategy where domestic consumption and manufacturing efficiency drive the economy and attracts outside investment.